Hi friends, my name's Jen Tarr and I'm an artist and educator from Central Pennsylvania. I'm here to share with you some art ideas that you can create from home. I know we're all stuck inside during this quarantine and we're going crazy, so let's get started. I'm a graduate from Millersville University where I obtained my Bachelor's of Fine Arts and my Bachelor of Science in Education. I currently teach middle school at Bermudian Springs and I live in Harrisburg with my boyfriend and my two dogs, Walter and Lily. For this video, I'm gonna share with you some art ideas that can be created using materials found in your kitchen. One of the projects that I'm gonna share with you in this video is a coffee painting, which is great for any age group. I'm going to demonstrate two versions of this project. The first is a more simpler version for those who are beginners. The second is a more advanced approach, which requires more materials and experience. If this is your first time creating a coffee painting, I would suggest limiting your materials and creating an image that only uses one value. This is an example of a value scale. For the simpler coffee painting, we're gonna go for the darkest shade of coffee. When sketching your idea, you wanna draw something that is similar to a silhouette or an outline of an object. If you're stuck and you can't think of an idea, you can do a simple Google search of different silhouette images. For the beginner version of the coffee painting, all you're going to need is some instant coffee, some drawing or copy paper, a pencil, a spoon, water, paint brushes, and paper towels. If you are limited on supplies, you can try one of these ideas and create your own paintbrush. Now, before I get started worrying about my sketch, I'm going to brew the coffee first so that it is ready. I'm going to take my instant coffee and dump it into a small cup. It doesn't have to be a plastic cup. It can be any container that you'd like. You can even use a paint palette if you'd like. I'm gonna pour slowly my hot water into the cup. Less water is better. And then I'm going to mix it with my spoon. And you'll see because it's instant coffee, it's gonna start dissolving. And this is better because you don't want all of those coffee grinds in there. Once you have let your coffee sit for about a minute or more, you can test it out on a piece of scrap paper. For the simpler version of this coffee painting, I'm gonna go with a more simple image, like this silhouette flower. I'm gonna lightly sketch the flower onto my paper. So now my drawing is finished. I have my coffee, a paintbrush, a cup of water, and a paper towel to help clean out the paintbrush. So I'm ready to get started. Now, as you'll notice, I'm going around the edges first, the outlines first, and then I'm filling in the center. This makes it easier. Here's my finished example of my more simpler coffee painting. You can frame it, hang it on the fridge, show it off. So now let me demonstrate the more advanced coffee painting option. For the advanced version of the coffee painting, it is best to use watercolor paper. I'm going to use 140 pound watercolor paper, but it is not required. You're also going to need pencil and eraser, some paint brushes, paper towels, multiple water cups, a variety of coffee to give you a variety of values, water, 
I like to use paprika and turmeric to give me a variety of color, tape, a spoon to mix the coffee, and an old cardboard or picture backboard that you can find to help tape your paper down to keep it flat. This approach requires a variety of different shades of coffee. For the advanced coffee painting, I'm going to make three different shades. The lightest shade is going to have more water. The medium shade is half water and half coffee. And the darkest shade is going to have more coffee than anything so that it is darkest. In order to make my three different shades, I need to have three different cups. I'm going to take my instant coffee and I'm going to dump a little in my lightest shade, a little bit more in my medium, and then I'm gonna dump the rest in the dark. I also have this coffee here that is of a darker brew, so I'm gonna add this to the darkest value so that it makes it as dark as possible. So as you can see, I have my three different values here. I have my lightest, my medium, and my darkest, and I'm gonna take my water and add it in. I'm gonna add a lot of water into my lightest, about half and half of the medium, and very little in the dark. Then I'm going to take my spoon and mix away. So now that I have brewed all three shades, I am going to test them like we did with the beginner painting. I'm also going to mix a more yellower tone out of turmeric. If we test the turmeric in the same way that we've tested the others, you'll notice that it comes out a lot oranger or yellower than the coffee. Now I'm going to try the same thing, but with paprika. Now it's time to come up with your sketch. Remember, you want to utilize as many values as you can. So coming up with an image that utilizes the light, the medium, and the dark will make your image better. You'll notice that this amazing coffee painting has three different values, the light, the medium, and the dark. Now that I have my painting materials ready, I'm going to start sketching for my advanced coffee painting. Now that I've finished my drawing, I've made a list of all the different objects or things that are in my image. This way I can plan out more contrast. Contrast is when you have lights next to darks. The more contrast, the better your coffee painting is going to look. So I think it's important that you set up a key for yourself. Make one equal your lightest shade, two your medium, and three your dark. If you created something like paprika or turmeric, you can just use T and P as those initials. You can label your artwork directly or create the list like I did here and label which areas are going to be which colors. I've decided that I'm going to make my sun white, my sky a number two or my medium color, my mountains here in the background are going to be the darkest shade, my water is going to be a one, two mixture, and my tree in the front and my different grass areas are gonna be the darkest shade as well. I'm thinking I may add a little bit of turmeric in my sun to make it yellow and maybe a little bit on the water to show the reflection. So before you start painting, you're going to wanna to tape down your paper to a surface. You can tape it down to a cardboard piece, your table or any hard flat surface that you could find around the house. I would suggest using masking tape and to tape your paper all the way around the edges. So now that we're ready to start painting, you wanna make sure you have all of the coffee mixtures that you've made, a variety of paint brushes, a water cup, and some paper towels to clean out your brushes. I would suggest working on your background first and working towards your darkest colors. So lightest to darkest. 
Using my notes, I'm going to start with my sun and my sky first. The most exciting part of the advanced coffee painting method is that you can create value with coffee. I'm gonna do that with my sky here. By using my medium value, I'm gonna paint the top and then I'm going to clean off my brush using only water. I'm gonna drag the color down. So only water, I'm pulling this color down. You'll notice I'm painting directly through this tree. Because I'm using a darker shade on that tree and in this mountain, it doesn't matter if I get this shade on top of it because I'm just going to take it to a darker shade. The single most important thing about working in the advanced method is patience. You have to let the painting dry in between your layers. Just a simple tip for you, you can use a blow dryer to help dry in between your layers. Now that your painting has completely dried, you can untape it by pulling the tape away from your drawing slowly. Now your painting is complete. So now I want to share some artists with you that create masterpieces out of coffee. This is the work of commercial artist, illustrator, and cake designer Maria Aristodou, who uses coffee and sometimes watercolors to create engaging images. She created her first coffee-themed work of art by accident, but she says that coffee painting really grew on her. Coffee lover and designer Stefan Koenig spilled some coffee on a piece of paper in the winter of 2011, and as he puts it, really found something. It was a coffee monster. Koenig's creations are sometimes cute, sometimes sweet, sometimes really scary, but each are completely unique as a splash of coffee hitting a piece of paper. He just finished his 500th monster, so go check him out. Here are some other materials you can find in your kitchen that you can create art with. Try some out today. Be sure to watch part two of Art in the Kitchen where we're gonna create art out of food.